Hi everyone, just a quick addendum to the inflation deflation video that I made at the beginning of March. Thanks for all the comments by the way, particularly as we have a mix of opinions. That's good. Get all kinds of opinions coming in, I think it's good for everyone. Anyway, this video. Goldman Sachs made an interesting observation recently. Now OK, I know that Goldman are the root of all evil and that their fingerprints are all over this financial crisis, but this is an interesting snippet. In fact, I originally made this video a few days ago, when I first read the Goldman piece. And since then, some of the things I talk about have started to come true, such as the Fed buying treasuries and gold making a move. Anyway, the quote and uh, link to the original are in the More Info section to the right of this video. So I suggest maybe taking a quick look at that now before continuing. Basically, the Goldman suggestion is that it takes between 1 and 1.6 trillion dollars of stimulus to equal a 1% cut in the Fed funds rate. They also estimate that it would take another 8% drop in the Fed funds rate to stave off long-term deflation. This, of course, would make interest rates minus 8%. In other words, the Fed would be paying everyone 8% to borrow money from them. Well, that'd certainly get credit markets moving again, but it's not going to happen. They arrive at this conclusion, by the way, using something called the Taylor Rule, which I'd never heard of, but I've linked it for you in the info section. Anyway, as I said, Goldman estimate that to prevent long-term deflation, the equivalent to minus 8 Fed funds rate is going to be needed. Now, the Fed funds rate is close to zero now, and the Fed are basically out of bullets in that weapon. They're not going to begin paying people 8% to borrow money from them, so what is their alternative? The answer is monetization and further expansion of the balance sheet. Buy treasuries, take the crap off Wall Street's books, replace it with cash, so on and so on. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I originally made this video a few days ago, and uh, we're beginning to see more of this now with um, the announcements. Anyway, how much will it take? Well, here's Goldman's figures. Using that proxy of 1 to 1.6 trillion dollars if equaling a 1% move in the Fed funds rate, and assuming that we need a negative 8% rate to stave off long-term deflation, and Goldman used that term, long-term deflation, Goldman estimates that 10 trillion dollars might be needed to save the day. 10 trillion dollars. Now I guess this can be seen in one of two ways. Either Goldman are acting as a kind of front man for the Fed to uh, soften the public up for trillions and trillions of dollars to come and just getting people used to these enormous figures so that 500 billion and 300 billion here and there just don't seem shocking anymore. I think that's a strong possibility, particularly when you consider that Hank Paulson and a host of other creatures infested politics directly from Goldman Sachs boardroom. So anyway, but the other side of uh, the argument might be that maybe Goldman are right and it does need 10 trillion dollars in order to fend off long-term deflation and anything less would simply be sucked into the abyss of asset deflation, defaulted debt and imploding confidence. In other words, the Fed are kind of sitting at a card table and with the hand they've got, if they can't go all in on this hand, then there's no point placing a bet at all. It's, a, it's only going to work if they get to that figure. So I don't know. It, it, I must say that um, the inflationists and gold bugs um, must take some some support from uh, from this kind of uh, thinking but I still maintain that the deleveraging and absolute massacre of wealth on the other side of the trade it's still in play it's still in play the deleveraging isn't over yet I mean all those counterparties to AIG they're still um, they're the ones actually who are banking on all this because basically the US taxpayer is is the insurance company now that they're relying on. AIG are just a, a middleman, a front, it's just an office. The people actually backing all that insurance debt are the US taxpayer and anyone who lend the American money. So, ten trillion dollars. Well, how much is a trillion dollars? Actually this can be it's just simply mind-blowing and I, I came across this um, in another video which uh, 
I thought was quite interesting. So I haven't checked the facts, but um, let me throw this at you. Link the video and uh, just try and visualize this. A stack of $1,000 bills totaling $1 trillion would be over 60 miles high. That's not end-to-end, -end. that's a stack of paper, one sheet on top of another, 60 miles high. It's just, it, that's one trillion. This thing is, it's just out of control. It's unbelievable. Anyway, I'll put a link to that video too.